Orthodox Psychotherapy Chapter 2 The Orthodox Therapist Part 4 The Search for Therapists We come now to the fourth section of this chapter, which is The Search for Therapists. Since we have been made aware of spiritual illness and of the great value of priest therapists, we must search for them in order to be freed from the ulcers in our souls. A really great effort is needed in order to find these true leaders of the people, the doctors of our souls and bodies, since certainly many bodily illnesses are of spiritual origin. In his homily on the New Sunday Gospel, St. Gregory Palamas advises, Let every Christian, after attending church on Sunday, diligently seek someone who, imitating the apostles who were in the upper room after the crucifixion, remains completely enclosed most of the time, desiring to be with the Lord in silent prayer and psalmody as well as in other ways. Let him approach him then, let him enter his house with faith, as a heavenly place having within it the sanctifying power of the Holy Spirit. Let him sit with the man who lives there, let him remain with him as long as he can, asking about God and the things of God, learning with humility and appealing for his prayer. Then, says the saint, I know that Christ will come to him invisibly and grant inner peace to the pondering of his soul and increase his faith and give him support, and in time to come will enroll him in the kingdom of heaven. It is necessary to seek out such a spiritual father. On this point, it is worthwhile to listen to what St. Simeon the New Theologian has to say. Ask God, he says, to show you a man who is able to direct you well, one whom you ought to obey. We should show obedience to the man whom God shows us mystically, in person or outwardly, through his servant, and revere him as if he were Christ himself. We should show our dispassionate spiritual father the kind of confidence and love that a sick person shows to his doctor, expecting treatment and healing from him. Rather, we should have even more confidence and love in view of the difference between the soul and the body. Christ himself is present in the spiritual father. He is the mouth of God. Further on, St. Simeon matches the apostle's attitude toward Christ to the attitude which we should have towards our spiritual father, because it is in that way that our soul can be healed. As the apostles followed Christ, let us do so also. When people dishonor and pour scorn on our spiritual father, we must not abandon him. And as Peter took his sword and cut off the ear, take the sword and stretch forth your hand and cut off not only the ear but the hand and the tongue of him who attempts to speak against your father or to touch him. If you deny him, weep like Peter. If you see him crucified, die with him if you can. If that is not possible, do not join with the traitors and evil men. If he is released from imprisonment, return to him again and venerate him the more like a martyr. If he dies from ill treatment, then boldly seek his body and pay him more honor than when you attended on him while he was alive, and so anoint it with perfumes and give it a costly burial. It is very characteristic that the spiritual father, the therapist, is put in the place of Christ. Saint Simeon also uses a type of prayer in which one asks to find a suitable spiritual guide who will offer us spiritual healing. O Lord, who desirest not the death of a sinner, but that he should turn and live, thou who didst come down to earth in order to restore life to those lying dead through sin and in order to make them worthy of seeing thee the true light as far as that is possible to man send me a man who knows thee so that in serving him and subjecting myself to him with all my strength as to thee and in doing thy will in his i may please thee the only true god and so that even i a sinner may be worthy of thy kingdom if a Christian prays in this way, God will show him the spiritual father suitable for him to tend the illnesses and wounds of his soul. 
Certainly, one should not overlook the fact that such therapists, both in St. Simeon's time and today, are rare. He says, In truth, those who have the skill properly to direct and heal rational souls are rare, and especially so at the present time. In conclusion, it should be said that it is necessary to seek out and find such scientific doctors therapists, or even nurses, in order to be spiritually healed. There is no other way of healing. God is our true healer, but so are the friends of Christ, the saints in whom dwells the Trinitarian God himself.